welcome to You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian Prophetic News. This is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries. Simply click subscribe, then click the bell to be notified for the next video study. Thank you and God bless. Good evening. This is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian Prophetic News. Welcome church saints body of christ the bride and unbelievers or anyone who is watching in with this bible study we are in the second chapter of colossians starting with verse three and four if you'll please get out your bibles we will continue after worship you can either find a Bible on your electric device or a regular Bible, and we will be looking primarily at the King James Version. If you have the new King James Version, that is even better. I'll be right back. worship. So let's go ahead and go into prayer before we start this study. Father, we just lift your name up right now in Jesus name and we ask you, Father, for insight as to what is going on in Colossians chapter 2. Lord, things that we wouldn't even imagine ourselves, Father God. Things that will um, be applied for today. Uh, we realize that Paul was in prison in Rome, but 
if you can bring that up to us today, Lord God, because of all that is going on in the world today, and let us see some principles and application. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. You are the healer. If there is anyone on here, Lord, that needs healing or needs uplifting, Father God, we lift them up to you right now in Jesus' name. Um, I have several people on my mind and one person that has already come to be with you and she's gone into the next life. Uh, we just send out prayers and ask that you uplift these people in healing. And Lord, that we do not, uh, Lord, let us be like um, Elisha. Or Elijah where if we see someone who has passed away that we are available to lay hands on them for them to be raised back up as many of the people that Elijah and Elisha and Jesus raised up from the dead if we keep doing it Lord God and practicing Lord and realizing that the Holy Spirit in us and you are the ones that do it. We just need to make ourselves available. Lord, I ask for strength for the body of Christ. I ask, Lord, that they will start growing up and maturing. Lord, that they will not be licking suckers and popsicles but Lord that they will start getting into the meat of the word because they are going to need it in the days to come we see darkness that we still the only joy that we can have is the word of God implanted in our hearts and knowing that you are a provision Jehovah Jireh and that you will carry us through this next season of what the earth and this government has to offer father whoever's watching from any other countries other than America we uplift your country as well we realize that these YouTube videos go far and wide and that we send prayers out to Australia New Zealand Canada and pastors that are being told that they will go to jail if they open their church or preach the gospel they said this was going to happen 20 years ago and now we see it happening Lord things are not different than they were in Paul's time they were told to not preach but you told us not to fear their threatenings and we go forward in Jesus blessed name as your army and whatever our anointing is Lord that we perfect that and stay within our own uh, uh, road not try to overlap into someone else I've had to learn that father because I want to be do it like this one or that one but Lord this is the anointing you gave me let me be joyous and content in it and we are grateful Lord let us be grateful for the food the provision and if there's no food or provision for someone who's watching I pray it in right now that angels will drop food and supplies at your door in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as you need it and that can be in the form of a neighbor or whatever you don't even have to speak it God will speak it into their ears I've had it happen many many times right Lord absolutely in Jesus blessed name we give you all the glory amen okay I think I just scratched my eye with something I didn't get uh, the, or I just got the edge of whatever <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's start reading chapter 2 now realizing that we were looking at five things that um, were coming into play in the second chapter and the second chapter uh, starting with verse 4 we are looking at enticing words and so let's get into 2 4 we ended in, with 2 3 so we'll go ahead and start with 2 3 in whom are hid all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in in whom in Jesus are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge all that we need is in Christ if only that's why our ministry is called you in him 
we are in Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory. All that we need is in Christ. If only we could learn that. He is the reservoir of all knowledge. In the science building where McGee went to college, there was a motto on his bulletin board. It hung there the whole time that he was in college, and it made a great impression on him. He said he was afraid he didn't remember it better than uh, he says, uh, I'm afraid I remember it better than I do the sciences that I studied there, he said. Next to knowing is knowing where to find it. He loved that. He was willing to admit that he didn't know everything. And he was sure that you have found that out by now. But uh, um, we know where to find it, find out, because we know somebody who does know, and that's Christ who's made us and given us wisdom. We need to rest in that. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ, and how wonderful this is. Now, Paul will discuss the error of enticing words. This is what the Colossians church was noted for, and what it was noted for was the fact that there were... Uh, uh, men coming in and preaching another gospel. Error in the church. Even though Paul wasn't there, Epaphras has come to join Paul while he's in prison in Rome, and he is explaining to him what is going on. And so Paul has had to write a letter to uh, apologetically uh, get this church back in shape. And so that he is backing Epaphras up also, as he is the one that he has been put there as the head, under the head Christ of that church. And remember, uh, Colossians is, Jesus is the head. Then Ephesians, Philippians, and Philemon all show other different aspects of Christ and the church. And so we are dealing ecclesiastically, um, uh, not uh, uh, so, 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 soteriology. Ecclesiology is what we're dealing with right now. And that means the order of the church, the way it should be run. And the fourth verse reads, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Have you ever been beguiled? Has anybody ever persuaded you to do something that, um, like when I was uh, young, we were not allowed to play cards. I, I don't even think we were really supposed to be playing uh, Old Maid or anything like that, but serious cards uh, no one in our family that was forbidden. But, you know, it's 2021 and there's blackjack now and all kinds of games uh, with cards for money. Have you ever been enticed to do something that you know that you probably are going to end up in the soup for because you may not have the money to pay off the debt if you were playing blackjack? And this is what the casinos have to offer, too. Because people are short on money, they want to try to find money the fast way. But anyway, uh, Paul is going to te deal with the matter of philosophy and enticing words. Philosophy and psychology have been substituted for the Bible. And don't we know that's what's being preached from many pulpits today? They're called PowerPoints. And this is the thing that is enticing to so many young preachers in our seminaries today. Even though I'm in seminary, I am not enticed in the least to put up a PowerPoint. I'm enticed to read line upon line, scripture upon scripture, a precept upon precept, and eke out every word that I can. Those that watch this video, I doubt that you have the patience, most of you, to even stay with me when I do that because you're clicking through. Click, click, click. Just like using the Bible as Russian roulette. And I know what that's like because time is a wasting and time is a premium and you'd rather be watching TV possibly. But if you are a serious student of the Bible, you will stay with me as we go through these scriptures and start taking notes because it will do you good in the days to come. You'll know how to deal with 
dark days. He says he's amazed to find that some of the men with PhDs, the degrees from seminaries, know so little about the Bible. They know all about Bultmann and Kant and Plato, but they don't seem to know very much about the Word of God. That is a great problem in our day. Bultmann, Kant, Kant, and uh, who's the other guy? Plato. These are philosophers. Uh, yeah, I guess you can have a philosophy. Boltman's kind of a philosophical theologian. Boring. But if you are a brainiac, you can deal with him. Plato, we all know about Plato. And, of course, you have Kant, who is another, that's K-A-N-T. That's another theologian. And I've had to study all three of them. Sorry, boring, 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 boring. They know all a see, um, and that is a great problem. There was the same danger in Colossae and also in Laodicea. Now, we are in the Laodicean age. The Laodicean age means to be lukewarm. I will tell you, if you ever find someone whose words fill your ears and wakes your spirit up, you will not be lukewarm. You will hear it, and it will start uh, manifesting in you as this is the word of the Lord for me, and you will start ministering to people, or you will start seeing or hearing the truth that you had not seen or heard before. So he goes on to say, uh, he thinks that uh, is what actually killed the church in Colossae, and it made the church in Laodicea the weakest of the seven churches in Asia Minor, and it was the worst spiritual condition, yet people thought that they were well off. Well, don't we think we're well off today? Well, we used to be a lot more well off. We used to be able to go to uh, department stores, and as you would walk through the store in Manhattan, they would spray you, spritz you with perfume. And then you go into Macy's or uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, um, and you would walk up the steps to the second floor, and you would see all the beautiful garments. Does that happen anymore? Now, we've got boxcars loaded on uh, docks. And ships out in the ocean that cannot get into port because there is no one that will work because they will not take a mandate, the mandated I or V. And so there's not enough workers to unload these. So even if you uh, are purchasing from Amazon or eBay, you may not be able to get your stuff till after Christmas, and this is just October. Things are getting worse and worse. And if you don't have the joy of the Lord, you might want to rethink accepting Christ because, <laughs> excuse me, I've been, oh, <coughs> I've been putting that off for a few hours I made some pork uh, ribs tonight I think I put too much pepper on them but they were good but there may come a day when meat may be at a premium if you've not noticed the food prices our grocery bill has gone up at least by a fourth probably more and I'm a pretty frugal shopper. <clears throat> it was the worst spiritual condition, and yet people thought they were well off. These cities were wealthy. We're talking New York City. We're talking uh, the largest mall in the United States. I believe that's in Minnesota. They boasted of their wealth and affluence and also of their knowledge, but they were blind to their true spiritual condition. Have you ever walked into a church? It's usually a denominational church, and it's usually ec ec ecumenical. They got a 
usually a really nice choir in the choir loft and they're singing Ave Maria or something. Probably not praise and worship songs and if they do try it there's probably not a lot of anointing on it. And then the pastor gets up there in his suit and he starts talking about philosophy, the days and times, but he might hang this all on one scripture. If you're blessed, usually not at all. What's going on with that? Ah, I think that computer is getting ready to <clears throat> go off or go down all by its little self. They boasted of their wealth and affluence and also of their knowledge, but they were blind to their true spiritual condition. And isn't that the truth today? Blindness is all over the United States in that it's the most interesting thing. If you, uh, I don't know if you know who uh, <coughs> Waters World is, Jesse Waters uh, with Fox News. He usually does a man on the street thing. And he'll hold up a picture of somebody or he'll name a name. Nobody's plugged in. They don't know who the vice president is. Some of them don't know what uh, the president is. They don't know the political parties. They don't know that there's um, a problem in uh, the diplomatic community. Uh, a lot of them are just busy gaming. Or some of them, if they do have a job, they're so tired by the time they get home, they just have their meal and fall into bed, which is usually the state of affairs. But spiritually <clears throat> unknowing, really uh, blind. Paul says, don't let any man beguile you with enticing words. Beguile means to victimize. Now, I'm going to take... Uh, McGee's word for this, I'm dealing with a new computer, just put the camera up and I just put um, this book up which was on another bookshelf on another computer and I had to do a lot of wrangling. So it is 9.35 tonight and I'm going to get something out to you all. If it's the last thing that I do today, <clears throat> and then I'll continue putting the things on this computer. And the reason why I have a new computer is this is what they call a V6, which means the internet net, net goes quick. It means that I can edit a video quicker. It means that I can get my work done quicker and still uh, continue doing my schoolwork. It will benefit you all, and it will benefit me. Praise God. Okay, let me get this back up here. Um, he says he heard of a theologian who uses big words and tries to be very deep in his thinking. He was talking to a group of men for about half an hour. Another man walked up to the group and asked one of the men on the outside of the circle, what's he talking about? The fellow answered, he hasn't said yet. That is the problem he never would say. All he did was talk with enticing words. Well, we have somebody that does that. Remember Obama? Enticing words. Never said anything, but he enticed. Think about it. You're going to see him again. Matter of fact, he's over there in the White House right now in back of everybody hidden down in, under the floorboards where you can't see him. But he's there. His whole cabinet is there. And he also knows all about Afghanistan and whispers into everybody's ears and he's ordering everybody around. And if you think that I'm kidding, I am not. You will see him up again. Okay, I know a young uh, dear lady who attends a church because, as she says, I just love to go there because the preacher uses such flowery language and he makes me feel so good all over. That is the danger today. A great many people love this pretense toward intellectuality among preachers rather than the simple word of God. 
Yeah, the simple word of God can be boring if you don't have the joy of the Lord or have Jesus in your heart. Otherwise, boring. Yes. I started preaching before I went to college, he says, and then in college I was exposed to liberal liberalism because I went to a liberal college. That was all I knew at that time. I was not grounded in the Word of God at all, even though I had a wonderful pastor. I thought I wanted to be an intellectual preacher. I thought that would be great. I think God, I thank God that that was knocked out of me in my second year of college. I became concerned with teaching the Word of God. Paul warns us to beware that they will beguile us with enticing words and will victimize us. Their words cause many people to follow a certain individual instead of the word of God. Like the Pied Piper of Hamlin, he starts playing and the unwary start following. If anyone watched the weekend news, you will see one pastor who may be very passionate but when someone becomes a pastor, you want to be above board on some things. But all we're hearing is his name on Facebook. Uh, this one, that, this one, this one, Mr. Pastor so-and-so, Pastor so-and-so, Pastor so-and-so, oh, Pastor, oh, Prophet so-and-so, Prophet so-and-so. They're all on Facebook. And they're all looking for locks, likes, and they're all looking for shares. They're all looking for donations. Uh, I guess their excuse is they can't open their churches. Really? So you have a church where people don't get healed? Well, gee whiz, then are you really uh, doing the commission of Jesus? Are you really laying hands on the sick and expecting them to get healed? One might ask that question. We need to get our churches back and the house of God back. So, for uh, verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, Colossians 2.5. As you're reading this, you can see the clauses. For though I be absent in the flesh, that is not a uh, independent sentence. Uh, yet am I with... Uh, so it could read better, I am with you in spirit, though I am absent in the flesh. That's not the way he wrote it. So, but he says, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So he's complimenting them and urging them at the same time of what it is that needs to be expected. They've not seen Paul. Some think possibly it's because there are new members that haven't seen him and he was there for a second. But that's obviously not true because he took a different road, went to Ephesus and then to Rome and was, I think, like a hundred miles away from Colossae and didn't go, did not step into that region. And uh, possibly, and I don't know this for sure, but I probably met up with Epaphras and sent him on over into Colossae to plant a church in Jesus' name for him. At that time, the word that was coming back to Paul was that the church was, was standing. Beholding your order, Order is a military term, and it means to stand shoulder to shoulder. That is what believers ought to be doing, standing shoulder to shoulder. Instead, many today are trying to undermine or take advantage of another believer. Oh, that we could stand shoulder to shoulder with one another. Steadfastness. Now, see what he's doing? He is exegizing the words in the verse as we go. I'm letting him do it tonight because it's too late, and but we'll continue doing it again as soon as I, uh, I do, what I don't have on this computer is I don't have um, 
what is that that I have been using? Um, uh, uh, isn't that terrible? Uh, it opens up in this computer all the time. Let me see if I can. Okay. Oh, Zoom. <laughs> yeah. It's too easy for me to remember. Anyway, we will be doing Zoom and we will be doing software again, but I don't have it lo downloaded into this computer. And I have to go back to school on the 25th and I got to get this stuff downloaded. Uh, this uh, computer runs so much quicker and faster and it um, uh, doesn't have the problems that the older ones have. Uh, steadfastness means to have a solid front, to be immovable. So in other words, right now we have a mandate. Are you able to be steadfast? Are you able to be immovable no matter what they threaten you with or no matter what you're going to lose? Are you going to be steadfast for Christ or are you going to buckle and go with the sheep? The literal translation would be stereotype or the opposite of movable type. Paul writes the same thought to the Corinthians. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. The Colossian church had a reputation for steadfastness, and Paul wanted them to continue like that and not be led away by the oratory of some. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Colossians 2, 6. What does it mean to be saved? To be a Christian? Well, he goes on. He has letter, a letter from a man who tells him that he's not saved because, frankly, he admitted that he wasn't perfect and that to keep all the ten, and he couldn't keep all the Ten Commandments. And so he says that He's not saved until uh, he does, until uh, he, says, uh, he says that I am not saved until I do. Okay, fine. My friend, salvation is to receive a person. In that person is Jesus Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Then it says, so walk in him. Now that you have received him, walk in him. Walk in the, uh, you are at that point putting, how I was able to understand it when I was younger uh, in Christ, my, the pastor that I had at that time, he, says, he would say, put on Jesus. Put him on. What would he do in a certain situation? So you would just put him on. Now I understand that he's in me by the Holy Spirit. He lives in me. And I must train myself to be able to hear him and then uh, speak out what he says and to do what he asks us to do. Uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. Okay. Walking is not a balloon ascension. A great many people think that the Christian life is some great overwhelming experience and you take off like a rocket going out into space. That's not where you live the Christian life. Rather, it is in your home, in your office, in the schoolroom, on the street. The way you get around in this life is to walk. You are to walk in Christ. God grant that you and I be joined to him in our daily walk. Next verse is rooted and built up in him, established or established. It's the old uh, word. It means established in the faith. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Colossians 2, 7. Rooted means rooted like a tree. You want to put your roots down as far into the ground as you can get them. And a tree is a living thing. And we are to be built up as a house. A house is not a living thing, but it requires a tremendous foundation. Paul tells us in Ephesians that the foundation is Jesus Christ. Having received Christ, received Christ, we are to walk in him. Doing what? Being rooted, drawing our life from him as a tree, uh, as uh, 
the water it comes into the root and the sap and build up in him your faith resting upon him that is why he adds and established in the faith a better translation would be by your faith faith is the means by which you and I lay hold of Christ now something about faith there are some Faith is the substance of things not seen but hoped for. However, there are some people that have what they call a gift of faith. It's one of the giftings. I have that faith. My faith is not broken. My faith in man has been broken. I'd have faith in someone and they'd let me down. But my faith in Christ at this point in my life then, let's see if the enemy tries to take me down because the statement I'm making it probably will so I bind him right now in Jesus name and tell him to get lost but my faith does not waver when the Lord tells me something's going to transact when he says wait for it <clears throat> wait for it doesn't mean it's going to happen in a day it's going to happen in a month or it's going to happen in a year or five years were to wait. Had King Saul been that wise to wait for Sam, Samuel to come and make the sacrifice, he would have reigned as king victorious and not had all the problems that he had because of the fact that um, um, to obey is obedience and rebellion is as witchcraft and so I know what it was and the Lord is bringing it back to me witchcraft guess where the 31st of October is as if you all didn't know and I had to make a very hard decision there is a pastor I really like although I've never heard him preach I've never heard him preach. There's uh, the two times I've been there, I've heard two other people, but for some reason I, I like this pastor. And I had to let them know I will not be returning to their church. I'm looking for a church. I have to church shop until the church that I am purchasing, until that comes to pass. And so I'm like, I'm not going to go with the crowd because that doesn't feel right to me. And I don't believe that's what the Lord's asked me to do. But uh, so I went to this church on Sunday. I'm not going to name it. And I, the people are, are nice and it's nice and, and the right time to start the church. And I go, oh, I'm like, oh. And I'm thinking there in my seat. Oh, is this the place I should come and rest for a while? And then they make the announcement. And a lot of you people might not like me anymore. You're going to turn me off. And that still does not sway me because I am telling you the truth. And this is the truth in this day and age, whether you like it or not. Would you all please think about donating candy or a trunk to put the candy in so that we can have it for the little kids on the October the 31st. They call it trunk or treat. I don't care how you dress it up. That's still Halloween and that's Witches Hollow and that is worshiping witches. Why do we dress something like that up? It's even like, I mean seriously. These children are not learning what they need to be learning. That is witchcraft. That is out and out witchcraft, folks. I enjoyed it when I was a kid. And I remember a lot of kids got razor blades in their apples and stuff and in their candy and, ne and needles. If you think somebody's not um, possibly going to uh, donate some candy to help him out uh, at that church. But the bottom line is, I already told the pastor. This is what I see, and this is the Lord. And if you don't, I didn't say if you don't stop, I won't re-attend. Re I just said I had visited, this is what I saw, and uh, they need to stop doing it. You love your kids, you'll stop doing it. The kids will complain. Who's the adult there? The kids or you? Um, 
then one of the girls that I really enjoy, I don't know her that well, but she used to go to a meeting that I used to go to when one of our mentors was alive. And I, she's rolling her cart out in the parking lot tonight before I came home. And, oh, I'll see you next Sunday, okay? I said, no, you will not. I said, if they do not stop the trunk or, tri uh, trunk or treat, you will not see me there ever again. And it's a shame, too. I really, really would have liked being there. Uh, no. And, 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 of course, I'm not hanging my hat on this is the worst sin of a church. But I don't belong to the church. And we must be wise to know who it is. And this could be... The pastor's not aware of it. Has no, The board may have uh, instilled this and he can't get out of it. Nonetheless, if they don't have the uh, presence of the Lord to know that this is wrong. And then I, uh, I am going to stop this at this verse. We'll go on next time. I just had a couple things I need to mention. I... Uh, was getting ready for bed and this one person that I believe is definitely uh, very prophetic suddenly I got a, a notice in do you know where some of your children are that are missing and I'm like I don't have a missing child but I know that there are people out there that do have missing childs children been missing for weeks months maybe years and all they said was shipping trunks shipping trunks and after I had got gave, given that word that pastor as a text I knew God was confirming it because we have some evil people out there trunk or treat well what will it uh, be to entice a child to go along with someone I can remember there was a man that used to, uh, I lived in Cincinnati when I was very, very young, very young child, and there was a gate, and I can remember this man that used to bring blue wrapped, you could see through the blue, it was like a, like the blue on my computer here, or the back of the screen, you could see through it clear like glass, here little girl, here, you want some candy? And if he could have reached over and been a bad man and picked me up and pulled me up over that fence as I reached for that candy, we have got, and the other thing is we've got to teach our children the word of God. I, there were a lot of things going on in my household, but my mom and dad made sure I was in church, although I will admit I wasn't getting much of the word of God there, but when you're a small child, and I never, ever heard about the rapture, ever. If I did, I must have been asleep and bored. Um, I left the church after high school. I did not go. Um, I would have been a lot better off had I consulted with the pastor of the man that I married, but I didn't. I was not taught properly. Teach your children the right protocol and you will have a child that will be able to be, have wisdom, be used of God, have joy, be able to navigate through this life without the problems that people in the secular have. And if I'm dealing with someone secular here, take note. The Christian, it's not that we're better, we're blood bought. And we know who our provider is. Who is your provider if you are an unbeliever? The government? Are they going to sustain you over the next few months? Probably not. They will um, woo you with maybe a government check or something for a while, and then they'll snatch it away from you. Because right now, if you can get employed without the mandate, I wish you well. Who's going to take care of you? If you can't work, who's going to supply you with food? Eventually, there's not going to be food even at the food banks because they've got all the cargo ships, and all of the cargo trunks or whatever they call them, all piling up with nobody because there's a bunch of people like you that can't work because they won't do the mandate. But eventually, they will fall and they'll do it. 
and they'll go right into the mess. Instead of trusting the Lord. I am not pointing any one person out. I'm just saying there's only one door through which you will be with the Father in the next life and Jesus, and that is by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if there's anyone here with a sincere heart who would like to accept the Lord, I am here to pray with you. And I do have a piece of paper, and I do use it because, let me tell you, Joe Biden is not the only person who forgets his words. I'm just not there yet. Well, let's just go. Ahead. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your... Eventually, I'll have this completely memorized. As an evangelist who's not out there doing um, crusades, at least yet, who knows what God has. All I know is he said, you perfect this first. You perfect this. You know how to do this. You know how all this works, and then we'll see. Okay? Right now, it's just setting up this computer. I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It's as easy and simple as ABC. Admit that you have sinned. I'm sure you did something today. You could have taken a paper clip home from an employer that you didn't pay for. Whatever it was, that's theft. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very simple. Just believe that God had a son by the name of Jesus and he's part of the triune God. Believe on him as Lord. And then see, confess him as your savior. And when you receive him as your savior, that means, guess what? You no longer have to worry about who your boss is. At that point, you're his. He's who you obey. He has a handbook all written down. You just follow it. And if you're doing something wrong, you have a conscience because he, he, the Holy Spirit is your conscience. And he'll let you know. He'll let you know. Go the other way. Go the other way. And if you don't, you'll find out that you should have gone the other way. Say this prayer out loud with me right now from your heart. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned. I repent and I believe in my heart you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Right now I receive your forgiveness by the blood of Jesus that you spent on that tree, on that cross, that you rose again on the third day and are sitting on the right hand side of God. Inter ever intercessing for me now I am saved in Jesus name and I am a child of God congratulations and amen if you prayed that prayer in the comment section down here you'll see it down at the bottom of this video if you see a little carrot you can open that up and go immediately right into it'll say you and him ministries dot com in light blue click on that it'll take you right into the website you can go right in into that chat room give me your email address prayer request bible request give me your mailing address for anything we can send out to you when i say we i'm using the queen's we there's just me it's just me right now okay me and the lord okay so i can say we thank you jesus and uh, you're not going to go on a mailing list. I don't have a mailing list. I don't have time for a mailing list. Uh, also, you can call us. And while I'm giving you this information, you're going to re uh, see this stuff listed. Uh, you can write me in care of Pam Gunderson, in care of you and him ministries. That's I-N, you in him ministries. 
at um, Union Ministries, 1018 East Wishka Street, Suite 213, Suite two, uh, 213, Aberdeen, A B E R D E E N, Washington, as W A 98520. My email address is pam at uinhim.info or pam at uinhimministries.com. My phone number is 833-PAM-TALKS, T-A-L-K-S, or 833-726-8255. Leave a message. I will get back to you. Uh, because the switchboard will alert me that I have um, a phone call or a message and explain why you're calling and uh, leave your telephone number and I will call you back. Anyway, I'm Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries, Bible Study and Christian Prophetic News. And I wish you a very uh, wonderful evening and tomorrow. You are welcome to... Uh, Share this video with anyone else that you believe might need some encouragement and needs to know about the Bible and what it says about the church, especially in Paul's day. God bless you. If you're born again, go serve your king. And if you are an inquirer or just receive salvation, be saved, be healed, and be delivered. And I will see you during our next Bible study. God bless you.